Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Welcome to our September 22nd meeting. Commissioner Kalo has the dog of the day. Oh, you got a mic. This is Zoe, our dog of the week. She's a nine-month-old female, lab shepherd mix. The owner dropped her off because his living arrangements changed. Uh, and she's looking for a good home. Uh, beautiful dog, listens real well, real nice. I'm glad we have a real dog this weekend, not just a little pup. Uh, so if you get a chance, stop by. She'll be available for adoption when, Jack? She's available for adoption now, so please stop in and pick up Zoe. We're still batting a thousand for dogs. She's very well behaved. She's got a lot of energy. Today is attributed to Jack Lavria, re Jack Lavria, retired journalist. Don't talk with your mouth full or your mind empty. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Madam Clerk. At 10 o'clock, we'll have a public hearing for the second public hearing on FY 2005 CDBG ED projects. Under resolutions number one, Job and Family Services Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Investments. So moved. Aye. Yeah. Investments. <laughs> we can wait for her today. <laughs> so moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. There are no advances or repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Authorized various personnel actions as indicated on summary from employees within jurisdiction of Marine County Commissioners? Commissioners, we have a uh, number of potential hires to discuss, uh, um, all but one of them uh, originating from the Job and Family Services Department, so I will i like to request an executive session at the end of our regular meeting uh, to discuss those hires. Thank you. Receive and journalize a regular annexation petition of approximately 95.2255 acres from Ean Township to the City of Elyria. Attorney John Keyes Walker is the agent for petitioners for City Land Group, Inc. Public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 17, 2005 at 10.30 a.m. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalen? Aye. Reject the bids received on September 8, 2005 for the Lorraine County Administration Building fourth floor office renovation projects. Instruct the clerk to re-advertise for bids to be published in the Chronicle Telegram retroactive to September 18th and 25th and pre-bid conference will be September 28th at 3 in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room and the bids will be open at 3 p.m. on October 3rd in the Public Hearing Room. Um, Jim, did you want to comment on this item? This is rejecting the bids and re-advertising. Yes, Commissioners, uh, last week uh, we pulled this off of the agenda because there was a technical flaw in the bids that we received. Uh, while we were very uh, happy with the bid we received from Ross, uh, they did not break out the specific electrical, plumbing, uh, etc., which is a small nuance required by the Ohio Revised Code. We may have been able to proceed, but if, if challenged, I don't think we would have survived uh, a, a, 
a lodge, uh, <coughs> lodge challenge. Uh, so it was thought that rather than uh, leave a potential open for a problem down the road that we would just rebid it. And we have already put it in the paper last Sunday, but this is just a housekeeping measure uh, to more formalize the process uh, to go out and notify the bidders that we have rejected all bids and are rebidding. I'm sorry for the delay, but I'd rather be safe and spend a little extra time. Unfortunately, it's going to push our renovation back about 30 days. I had hoped that we would be um, moving into some uh, new space by the end of January. Now I believe it will be more likely the end of February, beginning of March. But uh, we're progressing ahead, and we have suitable space right now, so it doesn't really complicate any other matters. Well, Jim, are we still able to go ahead with uh, electrical upgrades over to the yes. building? The electrical contract <coughs> that you awarded last week was a separate bid okay. all on its own. That, that wasn't so much for the fourth floor as a general building renovation right. issue, uh, and we need to go ahead and do that uh, because Children's Services is pretty much at a standstill with their renovation until the electrical upgrades are completed in the building. Uh, and I appreciate you bringing it up. I wasn't aware uh, at what a sorry state our <laughs> electrical distribution system was in this building until we started having a lot of this work done. Johnson Controls actually brought it to our attention when they were surveying the building. It was a it's it's pretty uh, it's it's pretty darn uh, uh, concerning when when you got uh, panels rusted up and you take a heat test on them and they're radiating way hotter than they're supposed to be and we, we were quite amazed because the loading right now is a lot less than what it was when this building was fully occupied and it's still too much for the, the panels down there. Well, 30 years ago, <clears throat> there wasn't the electrical use that there is today. Computers and. Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. Nope. I'll move for approval. Second. Ms. Blair. <coughs> Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Community Development Department award bid to Astro Pool Company, Inc., Mansfield, Ohio, amount of $92,200 for the mall needing park pool spray ground improvements in the city of Amherst. Two bids were received on September 14th, this being the most responsive. $34,900 will be paid from account 12604-2501-450408, and the remaining $57,300 will be paid by the city of Amherst. Issue a notice to proceed letter effective on or before September 22nd and complete on or before December 31st, 2005, and authorize county auditor administrator to notify the county auditor to, to release retainage and completion of said project. Uh, Mr. Twining, do you have any comments on this project? <coughs> this is a CDBG project, and it, uh, the lion's share of this project will be paid by the city of Amherst. Um, you might note that we tried desperately to use Lorain County companies. This one's out of Mansfield, partly because it's specialized equipment, and secondly, the CDBG, because it's state and federal dollars, will not allow us to have Lorain County firms only. We do everything we can to encourage Lorain County businesses, but if the apparent low bidder is from outside of Lorain County, we are obligated to at least recommend that the contract be awarded. Um, again, about roughly a third of this will be paid by the county's CDBG funds and the balance from the uh, city of Amherst. Thank you, Mr. Second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Job and Family Services approved purchase of service agreement between Lorraine County Department of Job and Families and Children Services for Child Welfare Services using TANF funds. Said value of agreement will not exceed value of $600,000 effective October 1, 2005 through June 30, 2006, and authorize Director of Job and Families to execute documents on behalf of the Board with Prosecutor's approval to same. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Approve and enter an agreement between Job and Family Services and Emerge Inc. Elyria in the amount of $10,000 for the design, hosting, and maintenance of a website for their agency. Two proposals were received, this being the most responsive, and will be paid from account 20501-0903-450-129, Internet Services, effective October 1st, 2005 through December 31st, 2007. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the engineer, authorize the Lorraine County engineer to apply for Ohio Department of Public Safety funds to upgrade intersection ahead signs and sign inventory software. The total cost of said projects is $23,520, with the grant being on a reimbursement basis to be filed by September 30th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kinkowski? Aye. Approve a cooperative agreement between the City of North Ridgeville and City of Avon for the replacement of the existing bridge on Mills Road just east of Lear Nagel over Mills Creek. 
County engineer shall act as a project manager and shall be responsible for doing all acts necessary to successfully complete the engineering, bidding, and inspection for replacement of Mills Bridge. The Rain County engineer shall submit an application to OPWC, which is anticipated will result in 75% of the project and the 25% funded through local participation through the County Commissioner, City of North Ridgeville, and City of Avon. Uh, John Hamilton, did you wish to comment on this project? Thank you. Do we have questions? Nope. The 25 percent is going to be split between the commissioners and the cities. Is that what that's saying? It says 25 percent through local participation through the commissioners, City of North Ridgeville, and City of Avon. Are we all participating a third? We'll split the cities and the county. We'll split that twenty-five thousand. It would be twenty-five thousand a piece. Each. Right. It's uh, three hundred thousand total costs, including engineering, and uh, uh, two hundred twenty-five thousand issued two grant, and then twenty-five thousand each. Can uh, Can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. I, I I see that you have through the county commissioners. Are we just applying, or are we? Uh, are the, the board at this point actually committing to fund with general fund dollars on this project? Uh, the county, we're agreeing to, to fund the 25000 local share. From what funding pool? Yeah. I haven't had any discussions with anybody on this 25000 so I don't, commissioners, I don't know. What do you have in your folder, Teresa? <coughs> Has anybody on the board had any discussions on funding this project? No. General fund? No. Just Ken's discussions about the project they were working on. Didn't know which accounts it was coming from. Is the board desirous of moving ahead on this or just well, having some discussion with Scott and how it's going to be paid for? Well, I think cooperative agreement that they put together between the county, North Ridgeville, and the city of Avon is a pretty good idea. Adds that a regionalism, and at twenty-five thousand dollars is our share. I don't think there's a whole lot to get this project done. However, <coughs> is it twenty-five thousand of general fund monies, or is it twenty-five thousand dollars of road and bridge slash gas tax monies? That's Jim's job. <laughs> That's why I was asking, Commissioner. I knew it. That was going to come up. Uh, the. Uh, um, I'm not telling you we don't have $25,000. It's just that we don't have a queued right now uh, for a project like this. Uh, that's why I was asking the board's desire. Is Mr. Carney going to assist with motor vehicle gas tax on this project? or? I think originally we, we sort of anticipated it would be road and bridge. And then, uh, when the agreement was written, it said county commissioners. So I, I guess that we could probably fit it into our budget for next year. I guess either way would be okay. Well, commissioners, I guess you can approve the resolution, and I'll, I'll try to work out something and give you information back. If you don't like it, we just won't pay. Uh, so, uh, May I see uh, the agreement? Sure. Well, that's in anticipation of says the Board of Commissioners will pay one-third of the local share. When I when I saw this on the agenda and I said through the County Commission, I was assuming that we were passed through. You know, a lot of times we were passed through on grants and things like that, so I didn't I didn't see it as uh, providing cash and I didn't have an opportunity to read that contract. Is there an urgency to having this approved today, John? Uh, just we wanted to get started on the engineering. The application, we've already preliminarily submitted that, and that'll be, uh, I think, by December the 8th, I think, is the integrating committee meeting. We'll have to have a resolution in place for the cooperative agreement. We still have a little bit of time then, don't we? I think we need to uh, determine uh, where that uh, county 25% uh, is coming from. 
I think we should know before instead of afterwards, don't you? You tell me what you found, so that's yes. fine, Commissioner. We can take we just hold this <coughs> till next week. In the meantime, you can uh, find that out, Mr. Cordes, okay? Uh, we can certainly. send you a letter down with, uh, once we uh, iron it out with Mr. Cordes, and we also have the uh, engineering proposal on it, but we can approve that at the same time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you. <clears throat> I didn't sign that. Mr. Cordes, County Minister. I have uh, one quick piece of business, uh, Commissioners. <clears throat> we continue to uh, uh, press the issue with uh, trying to get uh, the repairs done at Job and Family Services, and it's been an ongoing problem. We finally have received the third quote, and I'd, I'd like to get the roof repair underway. And I'm sorry it wasn't in our regular board business, but I feel compelled to, to move this issue off the floor so that we can get somebody on that roof. Uh, we, we got some aggressive quotes there, and, and we just were able to finish that, and I would ask you to award that contract, I think it's for $5,000 uh, to make the necessary repairs. We did repairs in-house, and the roof is not leaking. Uh, we were able to uh, temporarily uh, deal with the issue in the last couple of rains. We've, we've been pretty tight on the roof, but we still need to do this and make the permanent repairs to that part of the roof. <coughs> and I will tell you that in, in the coming uh, next year or two, uh, we're going to try to do it. And it's going to be a bid project. We're not breaking it up for that reason. We're going to break it into pieces because the roof is so big. We have all that square footage on the one on one floor, so the roof is massive on that building. Uh, we're going to have to spend a couple hundred thousand. Not, let, me, let me restate that: not a couple, several hundred thousand dollars, probably replacing pieces of that roof every year now for the next few years. That roof was put on in um, '93. It's like our parking garage. It's like our parking garage. It's going to become the money pit. Uh, so that, that rubber roof is about 11 or 12 years old, and that's about the life of those rubber roofs. Uh, everybody likes them uh, over the built-up roofs, but they don't last as long as a build-up. Uh, and once they start to fail, they're awful hard to, to deal with. And that roof is beginning to fail in places, and it's going to need a lot of attention in the next couple of years. And, and this quote is to do what? That's just to make a more permanent repair to the areas that we've already repaired so that we we have time to uh, get ready to fit this out in the spring to start doing sections, putting new new roofing on sections of that. Hopefully, this will uh, carry us through the winter. Okay. Did we get three bids on this? Yes, we did. They're, they're listed in the front and the bottom. Okay. 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 Wow, there's some big discrepancies. Big and, you know, it's it's. <coughs> any of these guys local? Uh, the one that we're bidding is is not local. Yeah, I, I didn't review them. Uh, I just got it this morning. Uh, I did make sure we had three quotes. I will tell you that depending on how Vermillion. busy the, how busy the contractor is, kind of how hungry they are at the time, is how aggressive they are in repair work. With and it's roof. a tough time of year with all the rains and everything. The roofers are quite busy. Absolutely. I'm somebody at my place to repair my building. Well, I got to tell you, it took us two weeks to get three quotes. We just couldn't even get anybody to walk the roof. They were they were in demand other places. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, uh, I'm hopeful that this will, like I said, carry us through uh, most of the most of the winter. And uh, uh, our guys have developed some expertise in how to patch rubber roofs now, so uh, they have the equipment downstairs, and they've they've self-trained themselves uh, to uh, be able to handle the smaller problems on the roof, which is a which is a good thing. For Should us. this end large issues through spring with meltdown and everything else? Uh, I'm hoping it gets us through all that, uh, Commissioner. Uh, I am anticipating, but I'm not guaranteeing. And if we have more problems up there, you may see more expense. Um, I just want you to brace yourself for how expensive, even doing it in stages, this roof's going to be beginning next year. Um, it's a big roof. Yes, ma'am, it is. It covers about 90-some thousand square feet. That's, that's the problem with having that kind of office space that's laid out on one floor. Stacking it, you know, the, the surface area of the roof is so much smaller. Uh, and cost you so much less in the long run. How about trusses and shingles? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's another area. It's, it's not. It's a flat roof too. That complicates right. it even more. Uh, uh, so you, you know, even though it's 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 sloped, it's not sloped enough where we still don't pool in certain places. And of course, we have all our HVAC equipment up there. So there's a lot of uh, walking on the roof, and rubber roofs just don't stand up well. That not at all. Um. Madam Clerk, I move that we approve the purchase to Tramco for $5,485.39 as detailed. Second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, that's all I have this morning, Commissioners. I know we have a public hearing, so uh, just to remind you of the executive session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Innes, Assistant County Prosecutor. Since you're having an executive session, um, I'll take that opportunity to update you on a few things. Just should just take a few minutes. Thank you, Jerry. Commissioner Lori. I have no report this morning. <coughs> Commissioner Dan. Thank you. Uh, I had an opportunity this week to visit the uh, MRDD facility with Amber Fisher and members of her staff, and I was quite impressed with what they do out there uh, from infants through adulthood. Uh, they've got almost a mini corporation going out there. They've got almost 700 uh, clients who are working for private sector, either in their workshop or out in the field. And we spent about two and a half hours together, quite impressed how they've run that operation. And they were speaking about uh, the renewal levy next year and how the federal government is cutting their funds and how the local share might have to be increased. Uh, it was a very worthwhile trip, and I learned a lot out there. If you ever get the opportunity to know someone who has those needs, it's one of the best places in the country, so I'm told. So I was quite impressed by that. Also, my condolences out to everyone who has to go through the wrath of Rita this week, and uh, hope them the best, and hope FEMA responds accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I have no report today, ma'am. Clerk? Um, I really don't have anything other than number, let's see, where did it go? Number 13 under board correspondence. That should be December 30th, not December 31st. Just to let you know. Oh, okay. Um, we're not going to be here New Year's Eve? That'll be throw a party. Where are you again? Mm -hmm. Number 13. Number 13. Changing that. It should be the mm -hmm. 30th rather than the 31st. Mm -hmm. So, board correspondence. I move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Public comment? We have five minutes. Maybe about four we minutes. Have two minutes. Any public comment this morning? Anyone wishing to address the board? Okay. No, because it depends on what watch you're looking at. I've got one minute. Well, just as a point of information, I'm reading, and you might as well be uh, uh, filling up the, the one-minute space we have. Um, Mr. Twining from our Community Development Department has supplied us with Black River Watershed Strategies, a report on the West Branch Community-Based Watershed <coughs> Strategy in the Black River. And um, apparently he has provided it uh, to um, the media as well. Thank you, Ron. But this um, was a project of a former employee who was hired by the Delta Institute and placed in his office. Delta has prepared the report and submitted it to the US EPA. And our new employee, Kate Hoffman, is working to implement these strategies. The project was funded by the US EPA as a demonstration project as a part of the bison binational efforts to improve the environment on our five Great Lakes. Two sites were selected as a demonstration effort, one from Canada and one from the United States. Uh, Kettle Creek was the Canadian site and the western portion of the Black River in the U.S. Several meet meetings were held, and we continue to work with a citizen advisory group on this project. Kate's challenge is to expand this effort to include similar efforts in all of Lorraine County. So if anybody would like a copy of this report, it's available at, at uh, Lorraine County Community Development. $7.50. I didn't bother to mention okay. that, but at $7.50, yes. Do we have it in the electronic version or is it only electronic? It's this, that's it right there. This is it. And he's going to make copies. It's going to go on next week board to actually adopt it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we going to adopt it? Oh, David thought of something. I didn't bother to read the whole thing. <laughs> the, uh, we don't have an electronic version. We can post it on the end. David? Commissioners, as long as you're doing commercials for Mr. Twining's department, um, your correspondence, uh, number 19, is the 2005-2006 Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Update, which has a lot of somewhat technical and not too scintillating information, but also has some really very interesting information about uh, the outlook for Lorain County in it. And boy, if that could be put on electronic, uh, on the commissioner's website, um, I think some people would be very interested in taking a look at it. There's a lot of 
uh, demographic <coughs> information and economic information that's really good there. Well, let's find out right now. Ron, do you have uh, what David was speaking uh, to? The sets on the website? Rebecca will uh, answer that question. Rebecca? Yes. I mean, okay. Portion of it is on Francis, Francis Ford Cope was having a heart attack. Would you come to the mic, please? Who is having a heart attack? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> commissioners. Uh, Good morning, yes, everybody. the narrative portion of the uh, SEDS can be placed on the website along with the project rankings. Uh, some portions of it, however, are submitted directly from uh, the communities and we do not have those in the computer. Uh, I'm sure they could be scanned and put in, but we would uh, work on that. Yeah, if you, if you, we have a scanner up here, so if you yes. need to have them scanned, we'd be more than happy to do that. Okay. And, and then we can make that available uh, for download. We will, uh, we will work on that and try to have it together within the next couple of weeks so that it's in a readable format on the website. Great. Uh, will you let us know in here when it's done then? Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. I think that's an excellent suggestion, David. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cordes. Okay. And I think we've reached the magic hour of 10, depending on what clock you're looking at. So we will proceed with this uh, public hearing. Uh, Rebecca? Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Rebecca Jones, Lorraine County <coughs> Community Development Department. This is our second public hearing for fiscal year 2005 for Community Development Block Grant Economic Development Funds. The purpose of this hearing is to discuss an application to the Ohio Department of Development for funding under the Community Development Block Grant Economic Development Program, a federally funded program administered by the state. Before funds can be awarded, two public hearings must be held. The first public hearing was held on February 10, 2005 and explained the program guidelines and general objectives. The second public hearing, which is being held today, is to explain a specific project that is being considered. This public hearing gives us the opportunity to hear from persons, organizations, and officials throughout the county concerning the use of CDBG funds for this project. The CDBG program was established under the Housing and Community Development Act that was passed in 1974 and amended in 1992. Funding for HUD entitlement communities is dispersed directly from the federal government, whereas small city CDBG allocations are dispersed through the state. The act established three national objectives. An activity must meet at least one of the following national objectives to receive CDBG funds. One, benefit low and moderate income persons and or households. Two, aid in the elimination of slum and blight conditions. Three, meet an urgent community need. Under the CDBG Economic Development Program, funds are primarily used for job creation, business retention, or attraction. At least 51% of the jobs created must be made available to low and moderate income persons and or households. The county has been asked to apply for $416,441 of FY05 CDBG funding for the infrastructure grant assistance to the Village of LaGrange. The Village of LaGrange and LaGrange Township have been working together to form a community improvement corporation and purchased 40 acres of land to create a new state-of-the-art business park on State Route 301. In order to entice businesses to expand and locate in the park, the village needs approximately $813,000 of infrastructure improvements to the site. There are three businesses that have committed to locate in the newly formed business park once the improvements have been made. The three companies are Community Health Partnership Physicians, which will construct a 4,000 to 5,000 square foot facility on almost two acres. The new facility will offer a full-time primary care physician practice. This will create a minimum of five new full-time equivalent positions over the next three years. Most significant bits will be constructing a new 29,000 square foot office and warehouse facility on six acres. This company will be re relocating its current software distribution operations in Avon to the LaGrange Business Park. Most significant bits will transfer 22 full-time equivalent jobs and will create 10 new full-time equivalent jobs over the next three years. <coughs> Royal Manor Healthcare will be constructing a new 
2,000 square foot facility on 10 acres for a 101 skilled nursing care facility. This state-of-the-art facility will be designed to provide a comfortable home-like environment for its residents and will be equipped and staffed to provide specialized services for high care needs residents. Royal Manor will transfer approximately 56 full-time equivalent employees from Palm Crest East and West in Elyria, Ohio. They will be creating 70 new full-time equivalent positions over the next three years. The total project cost for these three companies is approximately $11 million. The total cost of the infrastructure improvements will be $812,881. The Village of LaGrange and LaGrange Township will be requesting $200,000 in 629 funds from the State of Ohio, and the balance will be paid by the Village and the Township. The Lorain County Economic and Industrial Development Corporation has reviewed this application and made a recommendation to the Lorain County Board of Commissioners to approve. The Board of Commissioners will consider the resolution authorizing submittal of the grant application at a future meeting. Once approved, the entire application will then be forwarded to the Ohio Department of Development for their review and authorization. Mayor Kim Strauss is here in the audience today from LaGrange, and if you have any uh, detailed questions about the project, I'm sure Mayor Strauss would be happy to uh, answer those. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm sure we'd like to hear from Mayor Strauss. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Sometimes asking me to talk about my projects is not a good idea, so I'll try to keep this short and simple. But, uh, you know, in LaGrange, we have a very unique situation. Um, I believe I was here about two months ago, and we were discussing an annexation and had some adversarial things going on and then you know a month or two later we're here doing a project with the township uh, to create jobs and and improve our community I, I think this is a very unique project um, it started out basically because we purchased this property to build a new facility for um, our council chambers along with a new meeting room which we share with the trustees. Uh, we do a lot of things in LaGrange that are a little different than other communities do. And then the new school basically purchased property at the end of this property and it made sense for us to possibly push our plans up somewhat. The reason for that was to help our new school with utilities because it was simpler to bring them in from Route 301 than it was from Route 303. So we decided at that time, well, we'll just put our infrastructure in to help the school. Before we knew it, it kind of went beyond that. There were literally businesses stopping at the village hall to ask if property was available and where it was available. and We were kind of pressed into forming a CIC corporation and and everything in LaGrange has been moving very quickly for the last couple months. I'm, I'm not afraid to tell you that I think I still have nightmares over trying to get everything done quick enough. But working with the trustees and the, on this project and the school and the community and these businesses has just been phenomenal. Um, my excitement is not only for our project but for the school. I believe these these jobs will help our, our children that are graduating. There are lower entry level jobs. There are upper entry level jobs. To me, it's such a nice mix of jobs. And I believe the businesses are just as excited because they can tap into the resource from our schools for after school work programs, for kids that are going to JVS, for culinary, and, and all different types of things where they can actually stay in LaGrange, learn, and hopefully take these new jobs uh, which we don't really have a lot of that available to them right now in LaGrange. Um, the school is excited um, because it, it has helped them. We've tried to plan with them so that we put the type of business in there that works with our school. Um, and we have offered incentives to these companies, but always with the understanding that it is never detrimental to our school system. Um, even when we set up CRA investment areas, it has always been our philosophy that we don't have any problem as a village giving these investments and these incentives to, the, to these businesses, 
but at the end of the year they are to make a donation back to our school so that the school does not pay or lose any funding through these um, different abatements and the school has always backed us a hundred percent so I, I I could go on forever about this project but uh, I'd rather open it up for questions and answer anything you might have or sounds exciting once again LaGrange Village and Township are back in sync as you know, it should be we're always in sync I think there's always a bump in the road now and then but usually we <laughs> get through that bump and uh, we, we still continue to work together and and I think anytime you can help two communities at one time but, uh, because these jobs are not just for the village or not just for the township they're for our entire community which we consider the township in the village and and hopefully we've even worked out the last bump in the road that we won't have the bump next time and we'll be able to get through those a lot easier but uh, I think this project will benefit both of us immensely and all of our constituents and you know we've even talked with them you know everybody throws around the philosophy that you have to control growth well I feel that you control growth by being prepared for growth. Um, we have a great community, and on, on one hand, that, that's a good thing for us, but unfortunately, everybody else is finding out we have a great community, and, and they want to move to our community. So we have to be prepared for that, and I believe by being prepared, you know, we've, we have a new sewer plant, we have a new water tower that's going to be online here shortly, and now we need to increase our business structure and, and have more opportunity for the people that are moving to LaGrange. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, other comments, questions? Um, is there anyone else who would like to? Lauren, do you want to say anything from Pogemeyer? Good morning. Lauren Falcone with Pogemeyer Design Group. Rebecca and the Mayor pretty much hit everything. I just want to remind everyone that um, you know uh, we are still working on purchase agreements with the companies, and we should have those purchase agreements in place within the next couple weeks. And once we have that, um, the application is being sent down to Columbus after you guys approve legislation. Are they approving it today, Rebecca? Probably next Thursday. Next Thursday you'll be approving legislation. So the application will go down to Columbus, and they will review it at Office of Housing and Community Partnerships. Also just want to point out that we do have a representative from Community Health Partnerships. Jeff Bouchon is right here. We also have Victoria Pavel from um, Royal Manor, and we also have uh, Brian Miller. Bob Miller from Most Significant Bits in the back that just walked in. So if you have any specific questions related to the projects, they can answer those questions. I believe we did do a good presentation, was it two weeks ago, to the CIC? September 8th. September 8th regarding the specific projects. If you have any other questions, please. I just have one question sure. um, uh, regarding the uh, nursing home. Um, you needed to, someone needed to obtain from the city of Elyria a letter. A letter was sent out by the village of LaGrange to Elyria. I believe it was the same day we had met. I believe it was September 8th or September 9th. We have not received a response yet back that I know of. We can follow up on that, though, for you. Uh, that's necessary for this to proceed, We Rebecca? don't need a response back. We just need to make sure we've notified them by certified mail, which and, was done. And that's all? You don't need a response? Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? What What is our course of action, Rebecca? Um, well, just a reminder that uh, Avon, the city of Avon, did receive a notification about most significant bits moving, and they did respond uh, saying that they regretted to lose the company from Avon, but were happy that they would be staying in Lorain County. Uh, and at this point, commissioners, uh, I have prepared a resolution which should be on your agenda for September 29th for uh, approval of this to send the application to the state of Ohio. So we're not taking any action today? No. Okay. Action on the 29th? Yes. <clears throat> okay. No further questions or comments? Uh, we probably need a motion to close this public hearing. How do you like that, Teresa? Getting <laughs> good. I'll move. We close the public hearing. Second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Uh, thank you all for coming today. As uh, was pointed out at the September 8th hearing, this sounds very, very exciting for uh, LaGrange uh, Village and Township and for Southern Lorain County and look forward to action on the 29th. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to refer the board back to item number 16 uh, under the engineers. There was a question about payment for the county share and uh, Tony has presented to Commissioner Kalo information from Bill Holtzman at the engineer's office that the dollars from the commissioners uh, are is coming from the engineering project account number 
dash zero 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 dash three hundred dash three hundred dash oh four dash six one zero zero dash six one oh five. Having that, said Teresa? that, no, I'm going to give this. It doesn't you. matter. Having said that, I will move for approval. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kioski. Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. And. Take my password to my computer. Mm -hmm. I move we go into executive session for the purposes outlined by the administrator and the uh, legal counsel. Second. Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Welcome to Golden Acres, Lorraine County's best kept secret. In the heart of Lorraine County, we are nestled on 22 acres of rolling hills in Amherst Township. Our rural-like setting is centrally located for everyone's convenience. Since 1997, when the Golden Acres tax levy was voluntarily abandoned, the home has been self-sufficient. We currently serve private pay and Medicaid residents are in the process of becoming a Medicare skilled nursing facility, which will enable us to provide a wider range of service to the residents of Lorain County. Serving Lorain County for over 100 years, Golden Acres will continue to strive to provide the highest possible degree of health, social interaction, and emotional well-being. While selecting the best place for your loved one is never easy, Many families take great comfort in choosing the friendly, home-like environment of Golden Acres. Certified by the Ohio Department of Health as an intermediate care facility, Golden Acres participates in the Medicaid reimbursement program. The facility anticipates certification as a skilled facility. Golden Acres has 82 intermediate care beds, 20 of which are for specialized care of Alzheimer and related dementia patients. Designed by the Golden Acres Gerontologist Consultant, the Alzheimer unit meets the needs of dementia residents who are prone to wandering and not mindful of their safety needs. Small by today's large facility standards, Golden Acres is a full-service, patient-family-oriented facility, operating 24 hours per day, seven days per week under the guidelines of the Ohio Department of Health. Respite care is also available, ideal for those who are caring for their loved one at home and need a break from the 24-hour vigilance. Golden Acres provides residents a variety of services. As a four-season facility, Golden Acres celebrates each season with attractive decorations throughout the facility. In December, holiday festivities abound. Spring is a time of renewal and celebrations include the annual Mother's Day Tea. In the warm months, Golden Acres residents and their families enjoy congregating outside on the patio or in the gazebo, spending lazy summer afternoons and evenings in the shade. Fall brings hazy days and cool nights, Halloween and Thanksgiving, bonfires and hayrides. 
A monthly newsletter, Golden Acres Chit Chat, contains entertaining articles and information relevant to all residents and family members, including the monthly activities calendar. Golden Acres also schedules visits from dental, podiatric, optometry, audiology, and psychiatric services. Beautician visits weekly and barber visits monthly. While no facility could take the place of your loved ones at home, our caring staff, residents, and their families will strive to make them feel at home and a welcome part of our facility. Unsightly litter is often the result of well-intentioned people like you and me being careless at the curb, around business areas, and at work sites. Lucky the ladybug, Ohio's first lady of litter prevention, says nobody wants to live or work around trash. Litter lowers property values and it's costly to clean up. Keep the rain county beautiful. Put the lid on trash. can deny the loving devotion we get from our dogs and I think we all agree we get back more love than we give them. I'm Dick Goddard. I'm reminding you if you share your love with